I'm Mike, and today, the blood type diet. A diet that uses your blood type to determine what foods are healthiest for you. It has people across the world actually learning what their blood types are for the first time. So we're gonna look at the theory behind this diet and the science for and against it and see where we end up. This concept was popularized by naturopath Peter Diadamo and his book, Eat Right for Your Type, which has sold over 7 million copies and has been translated into about 60 different languages. Despite there being over 30 different specific blood types, eight of which are relevant for blood transfusions, Diadamo breaks it down to four main types, O, A, B, and AB. That's so personal. All right, let's get to it, go through each type and see if Dr. Diadamo's logic holds up, starting with the most common blood type, O. Let's start right here. Well, type O is basically an old blood type. So the best way to describe the type O diet is essentially kind of a caveman diet. This is what people ate when they were hunter-gatherers back mm -hmm. 100,000 years ago, and this is what they best adapted to. Steak, I mean, meat. According to his website in particular, that means focusing on lean, organic meats, vegetables, and fruits, avoiding wheat and dairy, and also caffeine and alcohol, a bit of a early paleo diet. Okay, so what's his biological explanation for this? Here he is in an interview. This particular blood type over the years has evolved the capabilities of breaking down animal protein far better than the other blood types. Uh, studies have shown, for instance, since the 1950s that the people who are group O have higher levels of stomach acid. He bases this off this study from the 50s that looked at just a few hundred people and used very scientific terms such as Negro races and showed a hardly noticeable increase in stomach acid for type O people. And why does increased stomach acid even mean eat more meat? Why not eat more nuts or something like that? And I think this represents a massive lack of understanding for what people actually did eat in Paleolithic times. I've covered this in my Paleo video before about how people used to eat 100 grams of fiber per day as this study showed, and why should we avoid grains like wheat when studies like this show that we were eating them at the dawn of modern man over a hundred thousand years ago. Okay, that was fun, but that's enough playing along. Diadamo is just plain wrong here. Firstly, because O isn't even the oldest blood type. A is, as this study outlines. In fact, O is the newest blood type. We just assumed it was old because it's less complex. And most importantly, all of this happened millions of years ago, far before any hunter-gatherer human or even proto-human for that matter. I could stop there because this whole theory is completely kaput, but we got more blood types. Let's keep it going to type A. Vegans like me, in theory, should be happy with the recommendations for this, which include dropping the meat and eating a plant-based diet. Diodamo says that because type A developed around the same time as agriculture, that people should be vegetarian if they are type A. Even if his timeline was true, and it isn't as we just covered, when we started agriculture, we also started animal husbandry. So even though it's a point sort of for the vegan side, I'm going to go ahead and say that that is no indication that people would be consuming less meat. They could even be consuming more. Finally, what one group ate during a very particular snapshot in time should not dictate what they are supposed to eat thousands of years later. In the distant future, people aren't going to be like, your type Z blood, which developed in the Twinkies era, so you need to eat more Twinkies and expose yourself to radiation twice daily. Okay, now to type B. Type B is allegedly higher in more nomadic populations, and therefore they should eat more dairy. Forget about the Chinese, 20% of which have type B blood, and about 90% of which are lactose intolerant. We don't pay attention to actual genes and intolerances, we just pay attention to blood types. It also arbitrarily says that these foods are bad, corn, wheat, buckwheat, lentils, tomatoes, peanuts, and sesame seeds, and that you should trade chicken for goat, lamb, mutton, rabbit, and venison. All because of a pseudoscientific blood agglutination theory that he extrapolates incorrectly between blood clumping from lectins in a petri dish all the way to inside your body, which is not how it works. As naturopathic doctors Williams and McMahon wrote on their essay on this topic, the author assumes that this clumping seen under a microscope would occur in bodies of people with particular blood types, making them unwell if they don't follow their blood type diet. And these important changes in tissue, enzyme, absorption, and transport the intestinal tract will not be mirrored in a slide of blood taken from the arm or fingertip. And human beings naturally 
produce antibodies to dietary lectin, such as soy, wheat, and peanut. And back to a quote from his website, you can start to see where his recommendations can become dangerous with quote, other foods that encourage weight loss are green vegetables, eggs, beneficial meats, and low fat dairy. Vegetables fine, but seriously, I've never seen anybody say that eggs are a weight loss food. If anything, they'll make you gain weight in your arteries, as this study shows. The plaque buildup in your arteries is directly related to the amount of eggs you consume over the years. And he doesn't stop there. Apparently, your blood type has to do with exercise now. Quote, You tend to do best with activities that are not too aerobically intense and have an element of mental challenge. I feel like I'm reading a horoscope. That's it for that blood type. Let's get to type AB. It's supposed to sort of be a mix between A and B. We can only get so creative here. He throws out a pretty random mix of foods with focus on foods such as tofu, seafood, dairy, and green vegetables if you're trying to lose weight. Avoid all smoked or cured meats. These foods can cause stomach cancer in people with low levels of stomach acids. Or more accurately, these meats can cause cancer in everybody regardless of their blood type, according to the World Health Organization. Okay, that's it for the particular blood types. Now let's look to the scientific community and see what they have to say about it. Problem is, there really appears to be scientific consensus that the blood type diet is not validated. Blood scientists have come out and written papers against it. A group of doctors in Norway got together and essentially said that it would be illegal to promote it under their Quack Act. And Wikipedia, for whatever it's worth, even mentions this consensus that it is not validated. Now let's look at some studies in particular. Here is one from the University of Toronto that looked at 1,500 individuals and retroactively determined what type of diet they were eating. If they were eating more meat, they would score more in the type O direction if they're a vegetarian, then type A. So they cross-reference that with their health state. And here's the kicker. They found that even people who are type O, who are supposed to eat like hunter-gatherers, benefited from eating a vegetarian diet, and that blood type did not correlate with health states for any diets. They conclude that any benefit you might get from a blood type diet is likely from, quote, high consumption of fruits and vegetables and low consumption of meat products. And now, as I promised, the most compelling piece of evidence in support of the blood type diet, this study on intestinal alkaline phosphatase, showing that people with B and O blood types have three times higher levels than those of A blood type. Diadamo says that since it plays a role in lipid metabolism, it would help your typo hunter-gatherer eat a higher animal fat meal. But back to those two naturopaths who comment, quote, At the very least, intestinal alkaline phosphatase is involved in much more than the function heralded by the blood type theory. In particular, it also plays roles in calcium, thiamine, and riboflavin absorption, as well as infection resistance. And back to the NDs who say that its involvement in cholesterol metabolism is overemphasized by the blood type theory to support an unhealthy recommendation for cholesterol-laden animal products. Now for the most compelling study against blood type diets, this one that scoured 1,500 studies looking for correlations between blood types and health-related outcomes. They say, quote, no evidence currently exists to validate the purported health benefits of blood type diets. So there's no correlation. It doesn't matter if you have a higher level of a lipid regulator in your intestine, you will still probably die of heart disease. It's not over for the blood type diet though. Didn't Diadamo mention that cancer remission study in his first book that was about to come out? Yeah? Well, that was 18 years ago and it never came out. He then did that again with a sequel where he promised that a study was going to be released about 10 years ago. Never was. Fool me once! And this brings me to an important point that I think a lot of diets rely on undermining, and that is that we are all one species. We all have the same digestive tract, the lack of claws, and fine hunting senses. For example, Inuit populations have genetic adaptations to handle fat better, yet their mummies still had high rates of atherosclerosis or clogged arteries long before westernization when they were eating their natural high-fat diet. What I'm trying to say is they're not half polar bear, they're still human. Dogs have 13 different blood types, that doesn't mean they have 13 different diets, they're all descended from wolves. So why do we have blood types at all? Well, scientists are still working on this, but what I see as the most compelling theory is that of the diversity of disease resistance across populations. Simply put, it's good to diversify your vulnerability to infectious diseases. Type O people, for example, are more susceptible to the bubonic plague. 
Type A people are more susceptible to smallpox, and type B people are more susceptible to E. coli infections. In summary, having a A positive or A plus blood type isn't gonna make you a better student. And looking at this study that found that people with type O blood type have an increased incidence of Achilles tendon injury, that doesn't mean that 40% of the population which is type O should just stop playing sports. No, the reality is that Diadamo makes drastically sweeping generalizations about blood type and diet, despite there being no correlation between blood type, diets, and health outcomes. And when you add that many of those generalizations are made off completely inaccurate timelines for blood type evolution, the whole thing just kind of goes out the window. So no, there are not four secret hidden subspecies of humans that have entirely different nutritional needs based off their blood type. And I think what's so annoying to vegans about the blood clot diet, <clears throat> I mean the blood type diet, is that people often come up to you and like, I could never be vegan because I'm on the blood type diet and I'm type O and that means I just need to use pseudoscience to justify my consumption of a massive amount of animal protein. But the reality is our planet can't handle that extra stress. The animals obviously cannot. And no matter what your blood type is, you will benefit from not consuming animal products. If you want to learn more about that, I will link my How to Solve the Healthcare Crisis video where I go into all the studies on that. And I just want to quickly say that a lot of the information here was from Dr. Gregor's video over at Nutrition Facts. So a big thank you to him for compiling all that information. All right, that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe and see you next time.